barbecue and other things I want to do, and this is what I've got going on for you. Let me tell you something. Look at that, y'all. Moon pie. I don't always eat a moon pie, but when I do, I drink RC. And I don't always cook a chicken on a can, but when I do, it's an RC can. We're doing cola can chicken today. Why are we doing cola can chicken? C, C, C. I'm celebrating 300 subscribers. Recently, my channel has just reached 300 subscribers with your help. If you hadn't hit that subscribe button, I wouldn't have had that many. Now, CCC is Roman numbers for 300. Told that to somebody the other day I was gonna do this. They said, only you would think of that, okay? CCC, cola can chicken. Uh, I like RC. All right, now. When I was first exposed to chicken on a can, it was about 25 years ago uh, in the early 90s. And a friend of mine who liked to grill and queue and drink a lot of beer said, Oh, it's great. The beer's going to evaporate and get into the chicken. And a lot of people believe that happens, but it doesn't really evaporate that much. Otherwise, there wouldn't be liquid in the can. But cooking chicken on a can does do a few good things, all right? First, a little bit of whatever liquid is in the can does evaporate, and it keeps the humidity level inside the cooking chamber up so that the juice, natural juices inside the chicken does not dry out. So the chicken does stay moist. Another thing cooking a chicken on a can does is it's the poor man's rotisserie because the chicken's not laying flat in a pan or laying flat on the grill. Air circulates all around the chicken outside of the chicken evenly and it can give it a nice crispy skin if you do it right okay so um it works a lot like a rotisserie without rotating the chicken because the chicken is sitting up on the can all right well cola can chicken i'm um, sorry coca-cola chicken recipes probably outdate beer can chicken all right and the Coca-Cola chicken recipes or cola chicken recipes involve putting the cola in the pan with chicken wings, chicken drumsticks, or other chicken parts, maybe chicken breast, and stirring them around in a saucepan on a stove or in a crock pot or in a roasting pan in the oven or something like that. So cola and chicken have gone well together. So I wanted to get some cola flavor into this chicken, so I marinated it in the cola. And I was going to do this yesterday afternoon with about an eight-hour marinade. I put it in the marinade yesterday morning at 7 a.m. It's right now 8 a.m. the next morning. Yesterday afternoon, torrential thunderstorms and rain showers, and I didn't want to cook it in the rain. So this chicken's been marinating in RC Cola for over 24 hours. I guess it's going to be good. Not only that, we're going to get more cola flavor into this thing. We're going to make a homemade barbecue sauce with cola, all right? homemade RC Cola barbecue sauce. I'll show you how to do that too. And when this chicken's just about done, we're gonna paint that homemade barbecue sauce all around it. All right, we're gonna cook this on an old smoky grill, a popular grill in the Gulf South. Um, they're not very expensive. You can get them for about $45 or so. And then you can spend about another seven to 10 bucks on longer legs. You can use it so that you sit up on a picnic table or you can get longer legs so it'll stand by itself. And that's what we're gonna be cooking this chicken on, direct heat on an old smoky grill. That's right, I said direct, not indirect, direct heat for this cola can chicken thing. Celebration of 300 subscribers to Big Lou Barbecue CCC 300 baby. All right, let's get this chicken prepped. Now, first thing we got is we've got a uh, little pan to catch juices, this little casserole dish, and we've got a um, one of these can holders. The can will sit in there well, like that. All right, and it holds the can fairly tightly too. All right. Now we don't want all the cola in the can. Uh, that's just dangerous and you're just wasting a lot of cola. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop it open. And now for that barbecue sauce I was telling you about, we need a cup. Well, this is an eight ounce mason jar. So we're gonna fill this up to right to the threads. And we've got a cup of cola that's gonna go into our um, I'm going to put this top on it right like that. That's going to go into our barbecue sauce. All right, so we're going to save that. Now, I've still got about that much cola in here, and I only need about that much. So I'm just going to take a little sip just to taste it, make sure RC is good. All right, cheers to you. Ah, 
Royal Crown. Love that sweet, sweet divine nectar. All right, now, so I've got about that much cola left in the can. We'll go ahead and put the can onto the uh, thing. Break this off. All right, now look here. This is called a church key. All right, now this is not a Baptist church key because I don't know if you can see this in the camera. But right here, it says Falstaff Brewing Company, St. Louis, Missouri. Right there, I don't know if you can see that or not. Falstaff beer. Now, when's the last time you heard of Falstaff beer? Eisenhower's probably president. That's before my time. Falstaff, y'all. All right, so you know this ain't a Baptist church key because it's got a beer, you know. We're going to take it like that. By the way, used to happen to open all the beer cans and soda cans this way back in the day. All right, we're going to do that. We're going to do two more. This is in case any of that liquid does evaporate. Uh, it evaporates even better. All right, now we're going to add a little bit of the rub we're going to use to this. I don't think you need to do this, but it's fun because the salt in there makes it fizz. Can you hear it fizzing? Oh, it's as much fun as putting peanuts in your coat. That's right. I was country before country wasn't cool. All right, for my next trick, ladies and gentlemen, it's a little trick I learned from the proctologist. We got to get this can in and out of the chicken's can with ease, so we're going to have to lube it down, all right? Now, here's my chicken. Been marinating in cola for 24 hours, all right? In a Ziploc bag. Most of that time it was breast down. I did turn it some, a thigh down. But I'm going to take this chicken out of, the, out of here. Let it drip dry right there for a minute while I close up this bag and dispose of it. We want to throw this cola away because it's had the raw chicken in it. All right. Now we're going to take this chicken and we're going to put it right on top of the can just like how get your see there we go like that and like that and I like to turn the wings like this all right you don't have to they left a lot of that neck on that chicken uh, that's okay now we want to pat it down with a paper towel and dry it off so that we can put olive oil on the skin all right it was marinating in cola and about a tablespoon maybe a teaspoon or so of this rub we're going to use all right for 24 hours all right stretch out that skin over that part and let's get some uh, olive oil on it i'll wash it off wipe off this olive oil bottle my hands have been touching chicken so that'll definitely happen all right and now i'll put the rub in this little jar so that I just empty this jar, run it to the dishwasher, and I'm just gonna rub. This is a chicken rub that I make. Um, I got a video called Grandpa's Poultry Rub. My grandfather used to make this for smoking turkeys, but I use it for more than just smoking turkeys. I use it just about any time I'm cooking chicken or turkey or any other poultry um, on a grill or barbecue or anything like that. I use it a lot. And it's not that expensive to make. It's a little spicy. It's got the cayenne base to it, but I love that. Let's get some on the inside there too. I can hear that cola. All right. Hey, that's it. That bird's ready to go dancing on the uh, on the grill. All right, these coals are done. So we just you see that center right there? We're just gonna dump them right in the center. Make sure they're spread out a little evenly. If they go to the sides a little bit, that's okay. All right, get kind of in the center there, guys. All right, and we're gonna throw in the hickory chunk right there in the middle. Put the grate on. Well, the chicken's gonna sit right here and say, oh, you're going direct. Well, look, uh, the coals on the Old Smoky are six inches below the grill grate level. Where on the Weber, they're five inches. That inch does make a difference. Plus, it's going to be sitting up on a can. So most of the chicken meat is going to be eight or nine inches above the level of the coals. It's perfectly all right to cook it direct in this cooker. All right, and I'll put the top on. I don't know if you can see that, but if I leave this, lit, this vent cracked just a little less than halfway, I'm going, and the bottom vent wide open, I am going to achieve 
a uh, 300 degree temperature. I guarantee you that. All right, let's get this bird right. on here. I've had this old smoky grill almost five years now, maybe right at five years. Let's see, 2012, yeah, and this is 2017. I got it in May of 2012, yeah. Um, so right at five years, and so it shows age, but I love it. I absolutely love it. So we're gonna set this chicken bird right here. All right, now what this is, is an onion bomb I'm cooking. That's for a different video, but I'm gonna set that right there behind it. And uh, cover it up. The temperature was already at 300 degrees. Can you see that? And I expect it to stay between 300 and 350 for about this two hour cook. Okay, to make the sauce. Uh, yeah, I'm going to the books. Yeah, uh, Reichland, you know, um, this dude, he's got a, had a real good TV show, then he had another TV show, now he's got another TV show. Um, the first TV show was really good. And he's got these barbecue Bible series. Now look, I'm not trying to violate any copyright laws. I'm telling you, I'm making the sauce out of this book. And he's got the sauce available for free on the barbecuebible.com website, so I will put a link to that. Um, all right, so it says you right here how to make the sauce, all right? And it's a page 141. You skip over a little bit to page 162. And there it is, Coca-Cola barbecue sauce. I'm going to be substituting a few ingredients. First, I'm using RC instead of Coca-Cola. I don't have any liquid smoke, but I tried this recipe out the other day and I substituted teriyaki. Also, it calls for uh, garlic flakes and onion flakes. I don't have any of that. I'm gonna use fresh onion and a pot of fresh garlic. So I did the sauce the other day and it was really good. The other thing is, I'm not going to use um, any uh, black pepper. Maybe I will, but I might use just some of my poultry rub. All right, and uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and use the black pepper, what, whatever. I don't know what I'll do. Let's find out. All right, let's start. First thing we're gonna do, this is that cup of cola we poured off from the can earlier. All right, pour that in there. All right. And I guess I can go ahead and turn this on. I'm gonna bring it to a boil. We're gonna put in a cup of ketchup. One cup ketchup. Tell you what, when I cook on video, I mess up a lot more dishes because um, got all these measuring devices already measured out, you know, to make the video quick. All right, it calls for a quarter cup of Worcestershire sauce. So two ounces is a quarter cup, because eight ounces is a cup. So I've already put one ounce in a Worcestershire sauce. There's another ounce of Worcestershire sauce. All right, it calls for a teaspoon of liquid smoke. I don't have a teaspoon. Of, uh, I mean, I don't have liquid smoke, so I'm gonna substitute in some teriyaki. You know what, it still came out to be a very, very good sauce. All right, and then it calls for um, three tablespoons of A1. Well, I didn't have the A1 ready to go, so uh, through the magic of editing, we can do three tablespoons of A1. This sauce is really, really good. I don't know why I need to buy barbecue sauce anymore. Um, next time I make it, maybe I'll make it with actual liquid smoke. All right, it calls for um, some onion. I'm using fresh cut up onion, just a handful or so. It calls for a tablespoon or so of onion flakes or whatever. And then I'm using um, a garlic pod that I cut up. And I'm gonna cook this down. I'm gonna cook it a little longer than it says in the directions because I'm not using uh, dried onions on it. All right, and uh, We're gonna let this simmer. We're gonna stir simmer cook. Oh Black pepper. I think I'll just go with the black pepper. I used the poultry rub the other day, but yeah, we'll just do it the black pepper That's probably the quarter ounce anyway, I'll put a link to the uh, recipe like I said the recipe calls for liquid smoke I'll show you what this looks like once it's um, all stirred together. Just stirring it up. We're gonna bring it to a boil and let it simmer. Okay, it's been brought up to a raging boil. I've let it go for about two minutes and I'm gonna turn it down to a simmer. 
and we're gonna let it simmer till it just kind of coats the spoon and gets thick like a barbecue sauce. That's all there is to this. Okay, the sauce has been simmering for a while. It's got this nice consistent reddish brown color to it. It's coating the spoon and it's time to turn it off and we're gonna let it cool down underneath the boiling point for a little bit and it'll thicken up some. And then we're painting the chicken. Okay, I don't know if you can really see this on camera, but that mark right there is 300. This mark is 350 and look where that needle is right there in between, been like that all day. And people say, why you like the little $45 old Smokies? Because this has been like this all day. It made day. in Houston, Texas and they're inexpensive and they cook like nobody's business. But inside this drum, there's plenty enough room to cook a, uh, a chicken on a can, beer can chicken, cola can chicken, whatever you want to call it with the chicken standing up. Other brands of grills may not have that room, but inside this thing, that bird can get up and fly in there. Been on there two hours, look how pretty it is. The only problem I got is the skin's all pulled back. I don't know if that's because it sat in a cold marinade for so long or if it was just cut that way, but that's all right. Meat's still going to be good. All right, let's paint it with the sauce, y'all. Here's that barbecue sauce we made. It's still steaming. All right, and we're just going to paint this on here all over. We start at the top and work our way down. That way we can paint the drips on here. Oh, cola canned chicken with cola barbecue sauce. Get, get the back side too. There's not a lot of meat up here by the spine, but there's a little. Get the back of those thighs. Get this barbecue sauce all on there. And I want to get some down inside there too. Yeah, get inside there. You may notice that I cut that little extra flap of, neck, of neck off um, before I put it on the grill with some kitchen shears. If you remember when I prepped it, it had a little extra neck sticking out there and I just went ahead and cut it off even with some kitchen shears. All right, we have five more minutes on this bird. I checked the temperature a little while ago. It's at about 170. And so we're ready to pull it off of here after that um, barbecue sauce bakes on for about five minutes. This is how we're gonna get this bird off of here. All right, it's ready to go. The barbecue sauce has been painted on for five minutes. I'm gonna take these tongs and we go in here like this and we we'll grab the can. Squeeze it and grab the can. I'm gonna take this little meat hook and I'm going here like this. And I'm gonna hook it under the wishbone and right behind there. I'm gonna hold the can here with the tongs. And there we go, like that. We're gonna pop that chicken on the platter. That's how we get that out of there. All right, let's um, go inside, tint this, let it rest up, and we'll cut it up and taste it up. All right, Big Lou Barbecue, cola canned chicken. Okay, so this um, cola canned chicken is done with the cola barbecue sauce, and we're gonna cut through it like that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Look at that, the bone just pulls right out. All right, so we'll cut the thighs off. I need a fork. All right, well, we got a fork. So now let's uh, go ahead and cut some of the breast meat off of here. Look at that, look at that. All right, oh, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. All right, taste test time. Oh, you can definitely taste that cold in the marinade. Really, really good. And a piece of skin with the cola barbecue sauce. And then get that off here. Right there. Mm-hmm. Cola can chicken, big Lou barbecue.